There we go. All right, okay. let's let's kick it off. Um, we uh, we always begin with a bell. I didn't I didn't feel like we were wasting time. This is a, this is a good a good fellowship meeting with one of our own with with George. So we don't have to be too formal here. But we'll go ahead and start the meeting officially uh, with the four way test. So if you want to unmute, you can say it along with me. So the four way test of all the things we think, say, and do. do. Is it the truth? Is it the truth? Is it, truth? Is it fair is it to fair all? To all, all to to Will it build a good Will it be beneficial? Be beneficial. 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 Awesome. Knocked it out of the park. Good job, guys. Um, actually, I'm, I'm trying to do better about that. Good job, uh, fellow members. I don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's a habit, right? You got to break it. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to say folks instead of folks. Guys. There you go, folks. That's Thank good. You, uh, so we do have we do have a great presentation planned for today uh, with our very own beautiful, George babe. Pepper. I'm gonna I'm just gonna scan real quick here to look around. Uh, I don't see any guests on, but if anybody's behind the camera with a guest, by all means, please unmute and, and interrupt us here. Good. All right. Okay. With that, uh, I don't have any I don't have any big announcements. Does anyone else have any announcements for the for the good of the order? The no? good of the order, um, um, I would really like to suggest that people go in and watch last week's last week's meeting again from That's about great. minute from about minute twenty because it it is incredibly insightful. It's incredibly he's a wonderful speaker, obviously. But if you weren't here last week and didn't hear it, if you were here last week and heard it, I still suggest that you go in and you you really listen to it because he has such an amount to say, uh, you know, about Rotary and how to get members and how to retain members and how to build fellowship with those that, that we know and that are in Rotary, both in our own club and other clubs and how to build that, that fellowship and that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing that Rotary has that is unique to it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I, I'm going to go ahead and drop the link to the, the YouTube in the chat right now. So if anybody hasn't already done this um, and you don't know what I, what I mean by subscribe, when you watch a YouTube video on the bottom right, usually there's a, a big red button that says subscribe here. And if you follow Instagram and influencers and all that, they always say, don't forget to like and subscribe. That is actually very important because if I send you this link, um, if I send you this link to our page, what you're gonna notice is that it's a funny bunch of numbers and letters after YouTube. So it's gonna say youtube.com slash garbly gook. And it would be really, really awesome if it said youtube.com slash eco-friendly rotary. But I can't do that until we get 100 subscribers. And it, oh, really? it's not, this is not a catch. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Like that's the YouTube rule. So you can't change your name on your, your, um, your link until you have 100 subscribers. So if we can get people to subscribe, once we hit 100 subscribers, I can actually rebrand it and it'll be youtube.com slash eco-friendly rotary, which is easy to remember. <laughs> if we can do that before someone else takes it. Uh, that is true. That I actually think that's, is. I think that's it. So if we can all do it and then encourage all our friends, whether or not they want to watch it until we reach the 100, because there's a few eco-friendly rotary clubs out there and we want them to go to ours. We don't want them to go to somebody else's. I like the sound of that. And here's here's the chat. Or here's the link to the um, okay. to the channel in the chat for everybody. So subscribe there. Okay. okay. With that, I will turn it over to Mr. Ed. Um, that's that sounds funny. And I'm I'm only 41, but I know Mr. Ed is something totally different. How about let's turn it over to Mr. Mr. Left. <laughs> no title. Okay, uh, <laughs> no title. I, I had okay. Client, I had a client from. Um, I think it was from the Sudan and uh, he used to call me Mr. Ed and I always had to tell him I, said, I really appreciate the respect but in our culture Mr. Ed is a talking horse <laughs> but uh all right are there any um birthdays anniversaries yep I've got an anniversary okay Roy today is my wedding anniversary and we've been married for 47 years well done. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. So uh, are you doing about 30 of them? Are you doing anything special for it? Uh, not today. 
Okay. All right. Well, happy okay, let's, 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 let's ask. So are you doing anything special at all? I, I, I thought I put him on the spot enough by asking that question. I didn't want to push <laughs> no, 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 him. it's not dig. No, it's not, dig. Not, not real, not really. No. You just got back from Alaska. Just got back from Alaska and uh, got back from a horse show this weekend. So we're done. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy anniversary. Wait, wait, you didn't Thank go to you. London for the funeral? No, but I, I've got square eyes by watching it. Square eyes? Square eyes. Like, why? Television, square, square eyes, it's a British term. It, it, it's television, the television is square, so you keep watching it all day. I, yeah, that's what square eyes means. <laughs> I, have the same, I have the same condition, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, you learn something new every day. All right. There you go. Your Any other uh, friends are helping you. <laughs> Any other birthdays, anniversaries? Yes. Mike? Uh, my grandson, uh, Shay, in uh, Polsbo, Washington, will be uh, 12 in two days. So that's pretty exciting. So I'll pay a dollar for that eventually. Oh, we got a good turnout today. All right. Well, I'll do one too, I guess. Uh, in, in honor of my uh, my grandfather, he was he was born on this day. Um, it was either 113 years ago today or 115 years ago today. Um, you can never quite tell from his passport, but uh, <laughs> so. happy birthday to him. And uh, any others? All right. Well, I I always have a hard time thinking of fines, and um, but um, I did see uh, that today is National Register to Vote Day. Um, if anybody is not registered to vote, um, then they uh, they need to pay a fine. Or if you haven't gotten somebody registered to vote today, then you should pay a fine. Am I excluded? Yeah. I think you're in another country. No. <laughs> I don't know. Do you vote? Okay. You register to vote? Well, oh, no, we don't. You just you get you get like a you get like a little pass in the in the mail, and you just take that to you know wherever you want to vote, and that's it. At you what don't age? have to register. At what age? From eighteen. Well. I there's a lot to comment uh, on that, but I, I will keep politics out of this. Um, <laughs> do we have any happy dollars? Jula? I'll do a happy dollar. Our club will be represented in the House of Friendship with a table at the district conference, where I will have bags for shoes to give to clubs. Awesome. Way to go. All right. All right, I have a happy dollar. I, I leave Thursday, I have a crazy travel schedule coming up and I leave Thursday to go to North Georgia to see my dad and then I come back and then I go to St. Pete for two days to teach class, drive back to Orlando airport and fly to England. Um, they didn't hold the queen's funeral for me, sadly, um, but, but um, I, did, I didn't get to watch any of the funeral either, but... Um, but uh and that was a sad dollar for the queen i i always thought she was a kind of a cool person so and anyway, so i owe you two dollars then but i'm okay. happy to be going to england it's crazy as it is yep yeah i wish i was going <laughs> denise uh yeah i have a happy dollar i um spent the weekend um on a, a little getaway so i went to I, I stayed in the netherlands but i went to a different province which is like just an hour away from where i live but um yeah it was really nice we went to a little a little house on this holiday park with a couple of friends and it was rainy all weekend but we just stayed indoors and played board games the entire weekend and there was this tropical swimming paradise thing going on there so we went there and we did all the slides and it was it was great. It was really nice. <laughs> so uh, we got to um, be children. <laughs> really. So did you play all the board games you bought while you were here? 
Uh, yeah, a couple of them. <laughs> yeah. She had to probably get another suitcase for all the board games and stuff she bought. Mm -hmm. she yep. It, it was really fun. We had a great time. Mm -hmm. And I'll just add my sad dollar um, as well. Uh, I have a sad dollar again for the queen. Um, I spent the whole day yesterday watching everything. And um, yeah, I was quite emotional. I was emotionally drained by the end of the day. I can tell you that. So mm -hmm. uh, it was it was beautiful. And I think it was very fitting for um for what she achieved in her lifetime so yeah agreed all right um mike i have an inquisitive dollar uh, by the way i cried during diana's funeral i did not cry for the queen during those 12 days that she was being traipsed around but here's my inquisitive dollar especially roy the queen died on thursday a week ago at balmoral castle uh, was she embalmed? Where would she have been embalmed? You know, would they bring the embalmers to the castle? Or they, there's no embalm, no coroner in town. And my wife looked up and said, the queen is buried in a lead line casket to keep the bugs out or something. So what, who knows what about whether she was embalmed or not? I do not know. Okay. But she's so in a lead lined casket and, um, it was an oak casket lead lined. I don't know if she was embalmed or not. 12 days without formaldehyde could be. I would, I would imagine she was, and they would have gone to the castle, to Belmoral, to do it. Okay. Yeah. Thank I, you. I would expect them to do the same. And I know it was lead lined because it's, it's custom for, um, for people who are buried above ground, so to say, to have a lead lined casket. Yeah. Hmm. All right, Sam. Yeah, uh, I guess sad box, just kind of awareness. I don't know. It's it's um, yeah, it's 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 a a big deal up there, but it's it's very few people in very small communities. Uh, Roy, when you said you just came from Alaska, I was wondering if there's any storm remnants or issues with travel because it was um, I think it's called Murbach. I, I forget the yeah, name. Yeah, I've I've been back about a week, but um, okay. Yeah, Fairbanks got hit quite bad as well, and that's where we flew into. Yeah, and obviously um, Nome was bad. We were, we were. Yes, that was just, just devastating, like historic yeah. devastation. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And it reminds me, not not joking, but it reminds me uh, when I first got to Alaska, the first year I was there, the principal at the school that I was working at in in Togiak, Alaska, Whoa. he told me, uh, "You're from Louisiana," and I said, "Yeah," and he's from Montana, and he says. Well, up here, boy, we don't name every strong wind that comes through. That's what he told me. And uh, I thought, well, that's strange that he would make make light of a hurricane. But then when I when I realized that the storms there are just out of proportion, like it's it's incredible the storms that come into the Bering Sea and they hit Alaska daily. But um, but this one was particularly devastating to so many communities and lots of personal friends of mine. So that and um, and Fiona in Puerto Rico. So if you're here in Florida, you probably already know about. Uh, the the storm in Puerto Rico, but I was actually planning a trip in October that we're going to have to cancel because of some of the devastation there. Mm -hmm. They're they're probably not going to be ready um, even for me to go down and visit uh, under any circumstances. So, just seems like Puerto Rico can't get a break. You know, over the last couple of exactly. years, it's, it's been really tough. Uh, Denise. I also have a set dollar for Japan. We're talking about storms. Um, I have a couple of friends in Japan from Rotary, and I heard that there were over 9 million evacuees, or how do you say it, that people were evacuated. Um, and it's pretty bad there as well. So it's, um, it's yeah, I'm sad where the world's going, but this is just, I think, global climate change. Very true. All right, well, I'll call on myself at, we, we sort of morphed into sad dollars, but, uh, but, but I, I do have a, uh, a happy dollar. Um, we, uh, we put an offer on a house in uh, Woodland Park, Colorado, Ooh. and it was accepted. And, um, okay. and uh, almost all the contingencies are, uh, are done. So um, we closed, fingers crossed, on October 14th. And uh, so the sad part is, I guess, and, and the happy part is that uh, when I get back to Florida from here, I'm gonna have to, we're gonna sell our house, but uh, we're moving to Colorado. So we're very, very excited for that. I have a sad dollar. 
Yeah. Ed's moving out of my neighborhood. That's terrible. I appreciate that, Mike. <laughs> there, there may not, there may be some people that disagree with you, but uh, that's okay. Uh, well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. Why are you moving? Why? Yeah. Um. Well, there, there's several different stories. Um, the flip part of me says that my dog likes it better and the beer is better here. Um, but we, we gave it a lot of thought and I think we really decided that we'd rather live in the mountains and vacation on the beach um, as opposed to live on the beach and vacation in the mountains. So I've wanted to get out to Colorado since I've been about 21 years old and now that my wife works um, full-time remote, we're, we're actually able to do that. So it's- uh, Ed, your answer, your answer to that reminds me of when, when people ask me, how did you get to the United States? And I'm always sorely tempted to tell them uh, um, by a Boeing 747. Um, <laughs> or the, the, the Irish are always anxious to, to make sure that if anybody goes to Ireland that they're, you know, they're taken care of and that they enjoy their holiday and all that. So I said to somebody the other day who was in Ireland, he was from, from New York. I said, how did you find Ireland? And he said, I got out of the plane and there it was. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was a joke, by the way. That wasn't true. <laughs> The plane landed there. The That's plane right. landed. I got out of the plane and there it was. <laughs> Hi, Finola, you look great. Haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. I like your new glasses. Really? Yes, how I do. You, how did you know they were new? Well, I haven't seen them on you before. They might not be new, <laughs> but I haven't seen them on you before. They're lovely. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's, that's all I have to say right uh, 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 Sad dollars and happy dollars and joke dollars. <laughs> All right. Well, unless there's anything else, I guess we'll wrap this up. Oh, George, you're always raising your hand. Uh, yeah, I have a happy dollar. I have two. Uh, where I'm really happy that uh, looks like we dodged the bullet on another hurricane coming to Florida uh, headed this way. But uh, we've been lucky the last couple of years. We haven't been hit by hurricanes. And uh, I got a second happy dollar because I had a lovely lunch with uh, Susie on Sunday and uh, she uh, kind of walked me through the presentation. I am so old school. Uh, <laughs> I, knew, I know photography real well, but the Zoom thing is kind of new to me and it's confusing <laughs> to say the least. But anyway, that's my two happy dollars. Thank you. And thank you for lunch. I have a happy dollar for that today. <clears throat> I agree. All right. All right. Well, Sam, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, with that, I guess George, if you're if you're ready, let's uh, let's see okay. what a let's see what a lunch will buy you these days. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> let's let's take a look, George. Uh, let's turn it over to you. And and I don't I don't um, I did my research on your bio. We don't have a, an introduction, but if if you want to start there or start your presentation, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to know more about it. Well, the presentation I created the, about 30 years ago when I was very hungry for work. And uh, it was it's a slideshow aimed at uh, basically uh, developers and people locally uh, in this uh, central Florida area. Uh, and it did, I, I've given the presentation to numerous Rotary clubs and it, it was great. Uh, I got a free dinner or lunch out of it and my little pen or maybe a cup. But uh, I got a lot of work from the developers and the realtors as far as doing interiors, which you'll see in my slideshow, if I can bring it up. <laughs> you remember how to do anyway, it? Anyway, and I've been a photographer for almost 50 years and I did make the transition about 30 years ago to digital, uh, which was a slow process for me, but trial and error. And uh, I finally, I got it, but uh, Every, the technology is incredible now and I can't see, it's hard for me to keep up with it. But anyway, uh, I came up here from Miami, I grew up in Miami and uh, I was, uh, 
I had a lot of, uh, I had aspirations of being a National Geographic photographer, but uh, that I had a family, I had three kids. So I know I'd be on the road all the time. And I talked to a couple of photographers and said, you know, don't for, you know, forget about having a family if you want to work for National Geographic. Uh, so I, I wound up doing weddings, <laughs> which, you know, were very lucrative. Uh, but uh, I also had a couple of bad agencies I was working for in Miami. And that's what brought me up to the Melbourne area in the Kennedy Space Center because I was hired by a public relations firm to uh, cover a shuttle launch. And when I was up here, I had left my card at about four different photo studios. And a guy right here in Melbourne hired me uh, right off. And uh, I've been up here since 83. And uh, I don't regret it a bit. I really dislike going to Miami anymore because of the traffic and the crime. Uh, if I go down the Keys, I, I go around Miami on the turnpike and uh, drops me right off down near Key Largo, which I have high school friends that live there and I go see them. But anyway, my presentation today, uh, I'm gonna keep it quick because I could, if anybody has any questions, I guess I could answer them right then, but, uh, or, you know, email me or something or whatever. But anyway, I think I'm going to start the show uh, right now. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to try and hit share screen sure. and hopefully my show will come up. But it's not. Uh, let's see. Do you have okay, the PDF share. open, George? Do you have the PDF open? I do now. Okay, just uh, click on that. Yeah. Double click. Uh, yeah, it was for some reason this is very uh slow, but it's um, here we go. There you go. Okay, I think it's coming up now. And hello, it's not. I uh, up, oh, it's, it's coming. Slow. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'm gonna start with uh, okay, George. Basically. One second, George. You see where yes, it's coming. You see where it says page view across the I the this just above where it says single lens reflex? Uh yeah, page Click view. Click that and that should uh, put it into a, a better view for us. So click there. Okay, we'll single it. page. Yeah. Single page. Okay. Let's try that and see if it gets rid of all that stuff. Didn't do a darn thing, but maybe this is just slow. Let's see. There you go. This page it's, view, single page. Click it's on okay. that. It was just not letting you do the paging the way it, I wanted it to. Um, go ahead. It's all right. Just click it. Click on the camera then, and and just get. Just, yeah, just click in there so you're you're located there, and see okay. if it'll let you do that. It it uh, no, <laughs> but I I can see the show and you can too. Yeah, we can. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, well, I just click, single click, nothing's happening. But anyway, let's see if I can uh, advance these slides. No, I'm stuck on this slide. Okay, George, George, yes, don't panic. Yeah. You see over on the right-hand side where it says restore pages? Um, yeah. and, and click on the word restore and see if that helps. I think it's waiting for you to no, know. It, see the yeah, blue? It says microwave edge closed unexpectedly. That's fine. Remember. That's fine. Just go to the blue button and click the word restore. Uh, See the blue button on that right where you just move your mouse down. It just yeah. says restore pages. Uh, that's all I'm seeing. Okay, that's fine. Um, try to go to page view now and see if it'll change it. There we go. There you go. It was waiting for you to answer that other question. That's what the problem was. So I see. Okay. So okay. Now, anyway, this is basically uh, just uh, this is how cameras used to work. I had one of these when I was uh, serving in Vietnam. And, uh, it was stolen from me, and I never bought another Nikon F. But anyway, this is how it works, and everybody can see my my uh, my arrow here. Uh, this is how. The light comes through the camera. This is, it, it, digital cameras work the same way too, professional. Uh, the light comes through, it hits a mirror that's down, it goes up, hits the prism, and you can see what you're getting. Uh, 
I'm going to go to the next slide. Let's see. Uh, this is just a diff basically twin lens camera, uh, which I took that pic with this type of camera. I took the picture for uh, Mike Holiday and his lovely daughter and son-in-law. Anyway, this is called a view camera. I use one of these quite often in Miami because that's what the uh, ad agencies wanted, a big image. It's four by five inches. Uh, and I sold it because it's not practical in most things anymore with digital. Uh, hey, this is a big view camera. Uh, I pulled this out of a magazine. This was, uh, this camera was uh, created to uh, create a big image this is when the two railroads came together uh, back in the 1800s. And uh, they wanted a picture of that to hang as a big mural in Times Square in New York. So they used a camera this big piece of film that looks to be about five by five foot. Uh, I had one of these, but uh, I couldn't fit through a church door with it to do a wedding. So I just went back to a small cam smaller camera. Hey, George. Little left, very little. Anyway, hey, yes, sir. On on these type of cameras, and yeah. when you see Ansel Adams, why does the image come through uh, upside down to the photographer? Uh, it always does, but then you they make a, a, a prism that reverses it, flips it upside un, 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 upside down, so you can see what you're getting. But they all the image projects onto the piece of film upside down. So you can either stand upside down or you can uh, buy the, uh, the, the uh, prism that, that uh, reverses the image, which I had to do even for my smaller cameras. Uh, but anyway, that, does that answer your question, Mike? Yeah. Yes. Sort of, kind of, okay. Uh, next slide. I'm going to try and go through this quickly so we can finish by uh, close to one o'clock. Uh, I think I can. And let's see what else. All right. Now, see, I'm not going to go into this, but that's, those are uh, aperture rings, just like the iris in your eye. Uh, it goes up and down. What uh, What's confusing is the the uh, the big the big hole uh, is uh, a wide open aperture. But what's confusing is it's a low number. That's just the way it was created. That's the way the Zeiss lenses were made or Nikkor lenses. But anyway, moving right along. Yeah, just stop me if you have a question. I'll see if I can answer it. Okay, moving right along. And I went the wrong way. And here we go. Oh, now this is interesting. This is one of the first digital cameras. I took this picture out of a, a magazine or something. But what's incredible about this is that uh, it's one of the first digital cameras. And uh, what you're looking at is, uh, is how it works. It's just like the light comes in, it's this mirror. And as soon as you click the shutter, the mirror comes. This is just so you can see the image through the prism. Uh, and then uh, this goes up and it hits the, uh, the sensor, uh, which is in the back, used to be film. Now it's just a uh, it's a, a, re a receptor for uh, for light, and uh, this is where all your pixels are and light wells. Uh, pixel stands for picture elements, and uh, there's thousands of them in there, and it captures the image and it buries it in over here or where in the software. What's incredible is that. They can do all this, all this, what you see goes into your cell phone camera, which is only a quarter of an inch thick. And uh, I'm amazed. I, I, it's hard for me to comprehend how they can do this. And the uh, image quality is excellent on your cell phones. Uh, and it's getting better, seems like every generation. But uh, anyway, moving right along, wrong way, Corrigan. And uh, this is just the uh, samples of uh, how, uh, how important it is to uh, use it. Well, in my case, I used to shoot manually, not automatic. Most of your cell phone cameras are, on, are automatic, but uh, this is a, 
a fast shutter speed with a telephoto lens that I used to have to manually switch lenses. Now everything has a zoom, zoom lens. You can zoom to a certain uh, extent. This is uh, when I was up at the Cape one time. I've done a lot of shuttle pictures. Uh, been a lot. Been, now this is just from the runway. That is the Enterprise, which never flew. It's in the Smithsonian, but they brought it down for some reason, a presentation or something, to uh, the Cape. That's just, uh, it's a closer view. Just by switching lenses, I, I couldn't walk all the way up to it. Uh, this is uh, this is just how you need, I at the time, I needed a tripod uh, because there's a slow shutter speed, not a lot of light. There is, it appears to be a lot of light. It would have been blurry if I would have handheld the camera. A telephoto lens, this is a, uh, yeah, look, is that the Miami Marlins? I forget. Now it is. But anyway, that's uh, Tommy Lasorda. He used to be the uh, coach of the uh, LA Dodgers. This is uh, at night at the, at the launch site. The night before a launch, I believe this is Columbia. So long ago, I forgot. I didn't write a lot of notes when I was taking the pictures. That's what a telephoto lens. I'm, I didn't move. I just switched to a 500 millimeter telephoto lens. And uh, this is from the press site. Uh, that's a 2000 millimeter lens that I could borrow from Nikon if you had a press pass, uh, which I did. It was great. And I got some great shots. And, oh, there's my competition. And uh, these guys are from all over the world. I think this was either the second or third launch. So it got a lot of press and we ride up we ride up we ride up there in a in a bus all of us and i got to meet some really neat photographers that i stayed in touch with oh this is just a picture of a biker but this is a sequence shot and this is you have to have a fast shutter speed so i'm probably i set my camera at, at 500 of the second or a thousand and uh and I just uh, just focused on where I thought the uh, bike rider was going to be. But you see, I can boom, boom, boom. That's pretty cool. Uh, Daytona. This is the qualifying round. Freeze action. This uh, these people uh, manufactured the, the gear, the uh, gear for. Uh, to uh, the military and uh, police departments. It's a uh, tactical fighting gear. But here again, I needed a fast shutter speed to freeze that action. Ah, that's my lovely daughter and her mother, my former wife, who were very close still. But anyway, that's a nice shot of my daughter. But I wanted, for the slideshow, I actually slowed the shutter down, shutter speed down to where Let's see what it would do. And boom, it's a lot more action. And, and I still was able to get a shot of the girls. And uh, that's kind of cool. You could do this if you're shooting manually. But now with the, with the cell phone cameras, you don't really have that, uh, that option. All right, this is, this, was, this is basically how to take better pictures. This is why I put this in here. This was a girl that worked for me who wanted to be a photographer. What she's doing now, I don't know, because like I said, this is 30 years ago. And uh, what's wrong with this picture? Uh, it's obvious that there's a palm tree growing out of the top of her head. And uh, she looks like she's holding that park close sign. So I said, well, wait a minute. You know, I want a picture of you. Uh, she's a lovely, big brown eyes. And uh, I said, take your, take your glasses off, sunglasses off. So she did. And this is what I got which isn't much better. So what's the solution? I turned her around, took her out of the sunlight, put the sun behind her next to a tree, and I used an external handheld flash to light up her face, and that's the result I got. Uh, and you, you learn, I learned all this by trial and error, but uh, yeah, lovely little girl there. 
I don't know what she's doing now. She's probably a grandmother. <laughs> but anyway, this I was do, working for Black and Decker, and they wanted pictures of this uh, site here. This is Orlando, and uh, this is kind of dark. Uh, so all I did was open up the aperture ring, the iris wide open, and it kept the same shutter speed. And it's a little washed out, but you can see the uh, instrument there, the, uh, the tool, power tool. Uh, I had the uh, privilege of working with uh, Florence Henderson for two days. Uh, the owner of the developer of the Lakes of Melbourne was a friend of hers. So she said, sure, I'll do it for 15,000 a day, but she got paid. I didn't get paid that much, <laughs> but I did have fun. I met her and she was a sweetheart and uh, God rest her soul. She just passed away a couple of years ago, I believe. This is uh, just an example of lighting. Uh, this is, uh, so that's my son and his mother. And uh, this is twilight right before it gets dark. The sun is down, but you still have a bright sky. And it's perfect lighting for people. Uh, no hard, hard shadows. Same thing here. It's my other son and his mother. This is an overcast day. But here again, soft lighting for this type of picture. You can't always control outdoor. But uh, if you ever watch TV and you're watching how they made it, you'll see if, it's, if they're in bright sunlight, they put a big uh, tent over to block the sunlight to get this effect. Okay, this is just directional lighting uh, coming from the window. Now, what we this is what we call the Rembrandt triangle, right in their face. And that uh, that's because Rembrandt used to do a lot of his paintings uh, that way. You see, the, that's why we call it the Rembrandt triangle, but uh, it's, they call, we call it the three quarter lighting. Lenny's coming from the window and it's going uh, on them. Okay, this is my daughter, one day old with her mom. This is at the hospital. Now I got the soft effect. Uh, if I had to just put the flash on my camera and shoot directly, it would give harsh shadows on too much contrast. So I had my handheld flash, and uh, which is connected to the camera, and I just turned it around and hit, pointed it at the wall. And it gave me soft lighting and a much uh, much better picture. By the way, she she was born with two inches of hair and never lost it. Yeah, it's great. Here again, bounce lighting off the ceiling. You can see it in her uh, glasses there. That's bounce lighting. And then uh, we went with this just for fun. And this is called we. Used to this is called Hollywood monster lighting because it's unnatural. It's light coming from a below. And uh, they used this in so many movies, especially back in the, in the 40s and 50s. They still use it because uh, it's uh, kind of scary. But anyway, that's different lighting. That's just bounce light off the ceiling at a hotel. I'm in the studio. I got the... Spare again, I lit up the background, uh, soft umbrella lighting on her, and one little catch light to uh, put in her eyes. And uh, oh, here again, if uh, if I were to use flash cuts directly straight on from the camera, I wouldn't have picked up this detail. Uh, so here again, it's directional lighting, and there's that Rembrandt triangle again. And uh, same, same, opposite view. By the way, Mike, this is uh, this is uh, the daughter of uh, one of the uh, the coaches at the University of Miami who went on to the USFL. You remember his name? Offenhauser, something like that. <laughs> he went. He's with Florida Atlantic as their uh, coach, head coach. Uh, I can't think of his name right offhand. But anyway, this is a long time ago. <laughs> but anyway, pretty girl there. She was married for about a year. Uh, that was it. This Now this girl worked with my wife at Harris Corporation. She made that gown herself. 
And uh, as far as I know, she's still married, but uh, no telling. I, uh, I've been out of the loop with just about everything and everybody for the last four or five years. This was, uh, this is just a, a novel, chamber novelist. And uh, I did a series of these. This is on a black background outdoors on an overcast day. And it still came out pretty cool. I did the, the series of these for the, uh, now here's a shot that I did for JC Penny. I did a lot of work for them. They were great to me for, uh, for about five years. But here again, to pick up the detail in the, in the, uh, in the shoes here, uh, here again, directional lighting from the right to the left to pick up that detail. Hey, George. Yes, sir. How about Howard Schnellenberger? That's his name. That's why I didn't remember. Schnellenberger. Yeah, that was yeah, his. Very famous coach. That was his daughter. And uh, he was with the USFL for about, what, a year. And that went under. But so I talked to him about it. And he goes, oh, yeah, I wish I had never joined the USFL. Yeah, yeah, he was a great coach. And uh, but his daughter, uh, she was beautiful, but couldn't uh, couldn't hang on to her husband. <laughs> anyway, next Ooh. slide is uh, just food. Food here again. It's soft, but the trick with food is you have to uh, you have to coat it with the oil, vinegar, whatever, uh, olive oil, to make it look more appetizing. And uh, I did a lot of food shots for uh, various people. Uh, the neat thing about this picture is that once it was done, they 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 were going to throw it out. And I said, oh, no, don't throw it out. And I fed my whole block where my studio was for a couple of days uh, with all this food. It was fantastic. Little perks. And this was uh, this was my best accounts in Miami. Uh, it's uh, this is uh, four foot tall and it's signed by the artist. Uh, the company was called Italia Imports. And they sold the most high-end decorators for wealthy homes. But uh, this, there was a trick to this. I had to really work hard to uh, figure out how to just to photograph this stuff and make it look like so the lights from below and above. But anyway, uh, this now this was a tricky one also. This was for a company called uh, CompSat. And they manufacture these... Uh, the motors that changed the uh, direction of the dish. And I was on a walkie talkie, an old walkie talkie and talked to the guy. Uh, I was about uh, 150 feet away. And I told him how much, how many degrees I needed to uh, get this multiple image effect. Uh, this is old film days too. So we all, I, I shot Polaroids back then. Yeah, but now, you know, with digital, you can just, you see it immediately. But uh, that was a challenge. But uh, anyway, uh, here again, we're outdoors. Uh, overcast sky, a black uh, background, just uh, a cloth background. I did this for the Brevard Symphony Orchestra. Uh, they projected these slides of different instruments and, and uh, featured each artist in the, in the uh, orchestra when, uh, when they had kids concerts. Uh, every year, they, they bring the kids from all the schools to uh, the uh, Maxwell King Center, and they uh, give a concert for free. So this was great. This was a lot of fun. Okay. I could BS you and tell you I shot this on the water, but I didn't. Uh, this is through the glass at SeaWorld in Orlando. Uh, I took my kids there, and I, of course, I always kept my camera with me, and I shot this. But if I had to turn the flash on, I wouldn't have got a picture at all. It would have hit the glass and just washed out completely. But so I turned the flash off and I manually set my exposure and got this image, which is pretty cool. Oh, here I am shooting a cactus flower over at, uh, down in uh, Naples. Uh, I was down there for some reason. And, uh, you know, as I'm trying to, I'm handheld, but I'm trying to make like a little tripod just to steady my camera. I uh, damn, I had a lot of hair then. 
<laughs> but anyway, uh, the next, I looked up and I saw this. Can you believe that? If you believe that, I've got a bridge I can sell you. And here again, just different lighting with film. You, you get a green exposure with, uh, with fluorescent light. Now, most of your cell phone cameras in, in, in auto, are on automatic and they compensate for the different colors of light and color temperature, which is measured in Kelvin. Uh, 5,500 being daylight, outdoors blue, all the way down to yellow, uh, which is about 240. And that's what a filter. I just put a magenta filter, which is a magenta is the color that's the uh, opposite of green. And I went overboard a little bit. It's kind of bluish, but that's okay. Hey, anybody recognize this guy? Billy no? Idol. You got it. Oh, I don't. Rebel, yeah. Music, music truly a master, Mike. Yeah, this was at the King Center. This is real tricky because the lighting changes constantly and it's a hit or miss thing. Uh, but uh, I got a good shot of him here. Yeah, he was great. In the midnight hour, that's the song he was doing. That's another shot from a different angle at the King Center. You're not allowed to take pictures, so I had to kind of hide my camera and take a picture when I could. Now everybody with a cell phone camera, they can't stop everybody. Everybody takes pictures at these concerts. This guy's from Survivor. Remember uh, Eye of the Tiger? Uh, it's the Rocky theme song. He's playing the guitar with it with a with a beer bottle. Uh, that's a slide effect, slide guitar effect. But anyway, that was uh, that was at a concert somewhere that I uh, did for Holmes Regional Hospital. It's their annual report, and uh, that took a while. Hey, it's just a pretty picture. Oh, I was shooting when I first started up here. One of my first accounts was. Uh, uh, shooting houses uh, for Realtor magazine. And I, I got a whopping $2.50 a house, but there were 300 houses that I had to photograph within two weeks. And I was constantly fighting the weather. But uh, anyway, that's how it came out. Hey, George. Yes, sir. Yeah, going back to your studio and the uh, lighting. Uh, so uh, I'm old enough that uh, we use these Instamatic cameras and brownies. And whenever there was a flash picture, uh, the people's, uh, uh, I forgot what it is that opens up in your eye, and then you get uh, this blue eyed look in all of your uh, eyeballs of the people you shoot. So do the new cameras uh, compensate for that or what? The newest cameras do. Yeah, newest digital cameras. Uh, the professional versions and uh, your high end, cell phone cameras like the the, the uh, what is the iphone 13 uh apple that uh, it's got a, a button on there that removes like red eye because red that's eye. what that was yeah, red eye from your flash yeah and uh that's that's incredible now i had photoshop but i had to learn how to use myself i had no instructions and that was a long learning process for me but i was able to through photoshop get rid of the red eyes manually uh, by cloning, taking taking a, a clean side, anyway. But that's how that, that's how that goes. But now it does it, there's even a button on there, red eye removal tool, it's great. Yeah, digital made my job a lot easier. Now here's something that, that you don't want to try at home, kids. Uh, the magazine, the real estate magazine, uh, they tried to go with a theme every month. Uh, it was a monthly magazine. And this was the, uh, it was the Brevard County Zoo uh, opening, the grand opening of it. And she wanted to uh, show this tiger, which, uh, which was uh, at an old zoo, Hauser Zoo on, uh, on a highway here in Melbourne. They transferred all the an animals, including this tiger. Uh, but this is at the old zoo. And she wanted a, a nice picture of, of, that, of, this, of this tiger. She was the editor and publisher of the magazine. 
So it was all the way at the other end of the, the cage. And I told the curator of the zoo, I said, you know, can, can you get his attention, get his attention and he'll come so he can get closer. And he goes, yeah, and he made a, he made a sound. And I think it was, it's dinner time because this, this thing, uh, it heard it and started running at me and it jumped up on the fence and peed on me because uh, my lens got stuck in that chain link fence and I, I just fell backwards and he just whoosh, all over me. That's another perk of the job. But there's a picture. I, I was able to get a good picture of him. And that was, uh, can you guys see the whole image? Because I'm getting cut off here. But uh, anyway. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we can see it, George. We can see it. I've actually sold this photo uh, to uh, a few different people who were into interested that like tigers. Now, what I've been doing for the past five years is taking a lot of my slides and uh, making a print, make a print, and put it on my easel, and I paint. Uh, I paint them now, and I, I'm in a gallery in downtown Melbourne with uh, this five or six of my pictures in there. But, uh, all right, this was, I shot this just for, uh, to get the attention of uh, realtors and developers who wanna sell a unit like this, but they can take their outdoor pictures real easy. You know, put the sun behind you and boom, uh, if the sun's out. But interiors, I got a lot of, these people kept me busy, it was great. But this is how it works. This is what they would get because this is extremely overexposed outdoors and it's underexposed. So the trick here was to light up the interior and then, uh, at, you know, you can see the indoors, but what about the outdoors? Okay, well now I didn't move my camera. I'm on a tripod. All I did was speed up the shutter speed and I get this effect. I get I pick up the light that's outdoors and I balance it with the inside. So this kept me busy for a long, long time. It's kind of cool. Oh, same here. Uh, pe local people probably know. I know Mike probably knows these people, but I, it doesn't matter. I can't remember the name. <laughs> but anyways, a nice home. But here again is the interior, and uh, they he was on five acres. And he's got pecans, trees, and grapefruit. So he wanted to see that. And here again, I shoot, I was, at the time I was shooting Polaroids. So he said, no, I want to see the outdoors. So here again, same thing. I'm on a tripod. I take this exposure. Uh, I, but I slowed down the shutter speed. So it would pick up the outdoors. And there it is. It adds a lot more depth to the photo, too. But these are little tricks that get me busy for almost 50 years. That's in the studio. I've won awards with this, with the Photographers Association. So they just like the composition. And so did I. I still stay in touch with these people. They're all musicians. Hey, there's, uh, that's one of our former governors, uh, Lawton Giles. Uh, I was doing a function in Miami and he had his whole, his, he, his whole family was there at a country club. And uh, he came up to me as they were leaving and says, hey, can you get a, a nice picture of us? I said, sure. So I took him out back behind the club and a little bench there and uh, got a nice portrait. And he ordered a lot of pictures. It was great. Uh, I think he's passed away since then. What do you think, Mike? Is he still, still around, still alive? I don't think so. No. Walking. Walken Lawton, something. Walken like Lawton, I'm pretty sure he Walken died. Walken Lawton, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He walked all over the state when he was trying to get elected governor. He was a and, good guy. Uh, he was a good governor, as I recall. He was what? He was a good governor, I think. Yeah, well, I think so too. Yeah, yeah, he was a nice guy too, real nice. And that just a grab shot that I shot over in Wikiwachi Springs. He's, uh, I've sold this picture as a stock photo many times and people that love raccoons 
they're nasty things if you ask me <laughs> they can be but anyway i saw five of them and i was on a little boat and they were wait actually they were waiting to be fed the boat goes by it's a glass bottom boat the people buy little stuff and they throw it at them and so they're waiting for their lunch but i got that shot this was a, a professional model and the caption was for a car dealership and it says will you trust your mechanic to this guy and uh <laughs> yeah it was, it was interesting this was another grab shot i would when i was working with florence henderson at lakes of melbourne i saw this i turned around and, and uh i haven't sold this but i it was published in the florida today paper which is owned by usa Today. different angle for a wedding shot this was a this was a disney in orlando which is a nightmare to to, to go to aerials you need a fast shutter speed because of the vibration in the plane uh comes up through your bottom while you're sitting there and you'll your pictures won't be sharp unless you can shoot at at least a one thousandth of a second so i uh i had a camera that shot at a thousand uh but this is where we used to meet too our old rotary club that's the ogala yacht club and, have you used uh, the drone no, now it's all drones. Yeah, yeah. I don't. You don't have to rent a plane. Do you I, use a drone? I no. I don't own a drone. Uh, I heard you got to have a pilot's license now to do to do do it professionally. And, Type one hundred and seven. Yeah. What's that? Type one hundred and seven ground pilot's license. FAA one hundred and seven. Okay. Do you have a drone also? I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is this is what everybody's using now. Uh, is drones and i i'm retired <laughs> melbourne causeway I, I did this for the hilton the local hilton this was in orlando i was on the building and uh, i did this for an advert advertising agency uh and that was the theme launch your future boom and the smaller image is when i uh i went to another part of the building and waited till it got dark and got that angle and okay. this is what the uh, art directors used to give me at ad agencies that's the layout they want me to match it and sometimes it was impossible and i'd have to fight with the art directors that it's a compromise but uh this came out it came out pretty good i had to go to tampa to get the darn uh flamingos uh and that's when i found out that the, some of these things live to be 100 years old Can you believe that but anyway this is how the ad turned out got a florida accent well that was one of their this agency's accounts was uh, at t okay let's see uh, okay, these are just a couple of shots. Of that. Now, this was done with Photoshop. I mean, all I had to do was I put, uh, it's called Quick Tack. It's like silly putty. I put it under each one of these and then with, got filled the glasses up and uh, stopped there. This, this was a half a day shoot just for this photo, which they put in kiosks and all the stores to sell their wine, whatever it was called, better 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 or something better half one but uh yeah with photoshop i was able to clone a white space put it over the quick tack and uh, remove it but uh, they were real happy and that's it uh, this was my book that uh, i did uh in cooperation with the chamber of commerce and uh they gave me, I got five grand to shoot it. It's great. And uh, I got 25 books, which which I sold them all except for two. I saw one. But this is uh, here again with Photoshop. This it, it, The name of the book is On the Edge of Seeing Space. So I tried to create that effect with the water. This is three different images. This, this is actually sun, uh, a moonrise over the ocean. And the ocean's really not near the shuttle at all. And then the shuttle I took, 
and then this moonshot is separate. So those are three different images to create the one image, but it worked for the book. And I just painted this painting just for something, something to do during the pandemic or, you know, we couldn't go too far. I think that's it. Yes, it is. Uh, any questions? Any other questions? Very good. Oh my God, we're, all, we're past one o'clock. I'm sorry. Yeah. That was a lot of Great. fun. That was a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Great job, George. That was good. Good job. Oh, well. Yeah. Good work. Good work. Thank you. That was fantastic. Thank you. Now I want to see some paintings next yes. time, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, well, I can't pull it up right now. Uh, I'll probably uh, cut myself off, but the yeah, the painting came out good too. It's as a matter of fact, it's my gallery. Yes, sir. You didn't show any nude shots. <laughs> I didn't think it was appropriate. I mean, uh, Nicole Kidman. I know you have pictures of Nicole Kidman. I don't really want to see photos of George nude as much as I like him. <laughs> but George I Clooney. Do. Yeah. I actually uh, photographed that Teddy Pentagrass down in Miami and uh, his son, uh, not his son, but uh, Bob Marley's son was there, Ziggy, and I got pictures of him, but I had to give him the film the same day. They wanted the film. They were giving me 125 an hour, which is great. I spent all day there, but I had to turn film over to him at the end of the day, and I worked there for three days. They were recording. Pentagrass was recording, and Bob was supposed to be there, but uh, he was still in Jamaica, and it was a, a studio in Miami that uh, was also in uh, in uh, Kingston, Jamaica, but it was fun. It was fun. I've had a, a pretty cool career. Um, I don't regret a, a minute of it. Uh, I didn't make a fortune, never will. Uh, I mean, but uh, I was I made enough to pay my bills, save a little for the kids. So uh, I'm I'm happy. I'm totally happy with the way it came out. Uh, I'd still be doing it if I didn't have. I've got physical problems. I can't walk that well anymore. Uh, from uh, They say it's from Agent Orange in Vietnam, and I'm not going to disagree with them because they're compensating me. So it was great. Yeah. George. So I, yes. George, George, could I, could I, could I ask you, could I ask you please to tell us the name of the art gallery in Melbourne where people can go to see your work and what times it's open? I have a uh, picture, before you do that, George, stop sharing. And I have the picture you sent me of you standing in front of your artwork and I'll show it. I'll do a screen share. Oh, so you know, oh, you, to, you know how to stop sharing? Remember how we did that yesterday? Uh, yeah, stop sharing. Let's see, yeah. stop share. There we go. Cool, all right, so I have the picture. So hang on one second and then George can continue. Um, now I've forgotten what I'm doing here. Hang on. Yeah, uh, actually, there we go. Denise. You, I took Denise to the gallery. Ah. We, were, we, were, we were watching Ailish when Denise was here. Ailish was playing the, the, the spoons. She plays the spoons with an Irish group. Uh, but that's the gallery. That's my little gallery and, of paintings uh, that I've done from, from my own photographs. Uh, this, this guy over here, he... Uh, he died of a brain tumor at 51 years old, and he was such a good blues player, uh, local. Uh, he was a legend, and uh, I took this picture, God, I guess back in, I don't know, 80-something, uh, and then I just worked from that and made that painting that's at the gallery now, and these are all priced to, priced to sell. And I, George, can you tell us, can you tell us the name of the gallery? in melbourne oh yeah it's called the uh, strawbridge art league strawbridge art and, it, league and it's and it's on strawbridge avenue am i right uh well it's actually in a place called la galleria which is like an alley between strawbridge avenue and new haven uh, is that right on the is that right on the corner where the melbourne civic theater is it's right across yep. the alley from that the little alley. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay. I worked okay. that gallery two two days a month just to uh, trade out for hanging my work in there. Plus, okay. I pay another fifty bucks. 
but uh, I've sold, I've break, broken even so far. I've been in there for four years. Yeah, it's great. Uh, Good. But yeah, I took, I took Denise in there and mm -hmm. introduced Denise and told everybody that she uh, she was going to buy something, but she didn't. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, was, I didn't push it. Yeah, I did take that picture of you though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm at the gallery uh, the first and sec first and second Friday of every month from uh, we're open from twelve to uh, five and uh, and in the weekend too, but uh, I only work on the first two Fridays. But anyway, it, it's great. It keeps me out of trouble. I have seen some of George's 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 paintings also and his photography, but his paintings, which are um, much you know, much more, you know, much more recent uh, and in his own home. And he's just, as I said, he is an amazing artist, an amazing photographer, is an art form as well, obviously. So Thank George you. is just a remarkable artist, remarkable. Well, artist. you know, I always could paint and draw. I, I ever since I was little, I, I impressed my parents because I could, I could make uh, anybody that was in the newspaper look like Adolf Hitler uh, <laughs> with the mustache and the hair. But uh, uh, as I got older, I got a scholarship to Miami Dade College for two years, a service grant. And uh, but the only thing you do with a degree in fine art is teach it. And I didn't want to teach it; I wanted to do it. So I switched my major from fine art to photography, <laughs> and right. went to the art institute for photography. And I, I learned to how to make a living at photography, uh, which I've done, and I'm real happy. Yeah, right. So. Yeah, but uh, any other questions? I know you guys want to wrap this up. Yeah. Good job, George. Yeah. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Thanks for doing Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Fun. Yeah. Liked it. All right. I have Very to good. Everyone. So I'm, gonna say, I'm gonna say goodbye. See you next week. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye everybody. Bye everybody. Bye everybody. Bye everybody. So long. Farewell. Da 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 da. <laughs>